Hi guys, it's Adam and welcome to the Reselling Rebels podcast episode number 11. So as always, before we get on to this week's topic, I always disclose next week's topic, which is going to be quarter four. It's going to be all centered around quarter four, all basically different manner of things. Um, I'll be touching on a few beginner kind of stuff. Um, obviously, this will be my fifth Q4, I think it is. Yeah, I think it's my fifth Q4 this year. Um, so... I've had a little bit of experience with Q4, um, so what I'm going to do is maybe go through a few of the different things that maybe a beginner um, will want to know about Q4, and obviously talk about it more generally for those who have obviously experienced Q4 before as well. So yeah, it's just going to be centred around loads of different things, all about that busy time of the year that we as resellers experience. And because by the time this podcast comes out, it will be early September, it definitely is due uh, for me to do a podcast on that sort of topic. Of course, I've done many, many videos or probably about three or four videos or something in the past on Q4 uh, throughout the years. So if you want to learn more about it as well, then you can probably go on my channel and just search Q4 and, and a few videos will pop up as well. But it's always nice to get a bit of fresh information out there and talk about it, obviously, each year when we're obviously coming up to Q4. So with that being said, that's going to be next week's topic. So if you have any comments, questions or queries, please do drop them down below. You can also get involved over on my Instagram or over on the community tab uh, on my YouTube channel where I do do a post every week, a few hours after the podcast goes live, where you can essentially just get involved and drop your questions and comments down below those posts. So with that being said, Today's topic is knowing what you want from reselling. Now, I'm going to be a little bit selfish at the start here, but we're going to get the selfish bit out of the way first, and then we're going to go through into more general stuff. But before we get the selfish bit out of the way, first I need to do another selfish little bit, another selfish little plug. Basically, um, I rearranged my description, my description box down below um, the other day, and I put my email up near the top of the description box it's not right at the very top but it's near the top and essentially it's just so that then people can find my email a little bit more uh, freely and if you want to send me any questions or you've got any business inquiries or you've got um, any video ideas you'd like to send me or you just simply want to get in touch um, via email then I have put that nearer the top of the description box so it's easier to find Um, and yeah I would appreciate any um, obviously feedback or any questions, any um, video ideas or anything like that. So that is down there. I just wanted to make you aware of that. I don't know how many people actually look in the description box. I don't know how many people were were aware that I had an email down there. I'm assuming quite a few people did, but I don't know. So yeah, I have just rearranged that. And then obviously a few more people should be able to see that and obviously get in touch if that's their preferred way of getting in touch. So yeah, I just wanted to touch on that. But now actually getting on with the topic. So I wanted to talk briefly about my business and where I want to take it. Um, And yeah, basically about some things that have changed and about things that I want to do in the future and all that sort of stuff. So I'm not going to go into major detail on my goals because I'm the type of person who, after considerable amount of experience of telling people my goals and then maybe not quite doing them as effectively i kind of now adopt the philosophy of not really talking too much in depth about my goals and just quietly getting on with them but i did want to just briefly touch upon what i want from reselling and then move on um into as i say the more general stuff and things that maybe will help you guys in your situations and stuff so with that being said i wanted to touch upon essentially where I want to take my business. So I've never, over the past six to eight months, I've never really had, I have had a defined plan. I've actually wrote uh, a couple of plans this year over numerous amounts of pages. But Although I've had those plans and although, yes, I've uh, I've stuck to some of them and I've actually been able to tick some of the things off, um, some of those pages, it's felt this year a little bit disjointed. It's felt a little bit um, like I'm, I'm essentially doing so many things. I'm trying new things out. I'm maintaining other things. And it's been very, very sporadic and very on top of me and quite overwhelming and all the rest of it. So 
with regards to my business next year, what I would like to do is get back a good Q4 pile. That's not to say that this year I don't have a good Q4 pile. Obviously, many of you uh, will be aware. You may have seen my lockup and stuff, and I have plenty of stuff for Q4. But next year, I want to focus on reinvesting those profits from Q4 into a load of stock because I know I know most of you will be aware last year I did put a fair bit of money into cryptocurrency so then that kind of distorted my cash flow a little bit and until I'm waiting or until until I can get that return on that money from the investments over the next few years as we come back into a what's known as a bull market um, in the cryptocurrency markets I need to essentially now reinvest the money that I'm getting from the reselling into Q4 stock so that then I can maintain that cash flow a little bit more next year and really heading up to Q4 have a really really good stock of stuff and be able to make fantastic money hopefully on Amazon still with Lego and other stuff um, obviously presupposing that I don't get restricted for any of that stuff so that's part of the plan next year and it's very very simple it's something that i've followed for quite a few years but as i say this not well not this year last year um that was kind of distorted a little bit with how heavily i was investing in things outside of reselling essentially so yeah that's definitely part of the plan get reinvested in the sales in january with the money that i've got from q4 and also continuing to um throughout the year just generally getting stock next year my focus as well as the remainder of this year actually is to certainly get back to the car boots that's another main thing for me this year i hardly did any car boots it's only in the last few weeks that i think in the last four or five weeks i've done about four or five car boots or something like that pretty much one a week so uh, and this weekend actually i did two because it was the bank holiday obviously so um so I've not been doing those and I've not been not been getting as many toys. And so over the summer, it's been a little bit slow for me with the antiques. Now, I know a lot of people have been saying this summer has been terrible. It's been atrocious. There's other people who are saying that it's been OK. But there are a good number of people who've said that it's it really hit them hard this year. Now, we can speculate on things like it's going to be Brexit or it's, you know, it's kind of economic slight economic turmoil or maybe not turmoil maybe that's not quite the right word but you know economic uncertainty let's say uh, we can speculate on that uh, we can't really put it down too much to the weather because the weather's been quite sporadic so you know it can't really be you know if it was a great summer all summer long and it's been you know 30 degrees every day that might say or it might go to or we might be able to assume slightly that less people are on eBay, more people are out there experiencing the weather. But it's a little bit of a weak factor, that one, to say, to put it down to that. Because if the summer was really good all, you know, well, all summer long, people would still be going on eBay anyway. People would still be doing that. So it's a little bit of a weak factor, that one. But the fact is, it's been slow this summer. You have to judge your business on the slow months. If I'm doing that this year, I am at critical point, essentially, Coming into August, August has been a much better month for me. My sales have gone up. Actually, it says on my little eBay graph have gone up by 40% or something on last month, which I'm so thankful for because it's been so bad for a couple of months. Um, but yeah, so if I'm judging my business on those last couple of months in summer, those you know two or three months over summer, maybe May, June, July, I'm not looking in an incredibly brilliant position or anything like that. Now, yes, okay, when Q4 comes around, I'm going to do well. I've got plenty of stock there. I'm cool. But you can't judge your businesses on the really, really good months. You know, it's just not what you do. So this is why I have to say to myself, well, look, I've got to get back to the car boots a little bit more. Coming into next year, I'm going to reinvest good in January put that stuff away and then really get good uh, get a good um it's almost guaranteed income in q4 i know we should never say guaranteed income with with regards to business or reselling because the sales aren't guaranteed until they're all finalized done and dusted and the person's got the item and they're happy with it and all the rest of it but it's almost like when you re when you're reinvesting in january and you know that you're buying good products good solid products it's almost like you're somewhat somewhat in some circumstances oh i've just got a sale there 29.99 it's a good one i've already done about 
uh, 30 quid today. We're currently 9.04, so now I've done 60 quid, so that's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, so there you go. That's just a positive affirmation of the fact that August has been a lot better than, than the previous months. But anyway, so uh, what was I saying there? So yeah, it's almost like you're getting those gar- you're guaranteeing some money in, in Q4, essentially. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get back to buying a few more toys, a few more of them faster sellers during the January through to, let's say, April, May, June. Well, pretty much all year, but I'm specifying the early part of the year specifically because if I can get more toys in the early part of the year and even start to be buying more toys from now on, um, then that should help me a little bit over summer because, yes, okay, okay, toys go a little bit slow over summer, but they don't necessarily... They're not as slow as the bread and butter ceramics that I've got on at the moment. They're a little bit quicker than those and that's what I need to do. I need to get a few more of them items back on that are a bit higher turnover um, because I never did that in start of 2018, late 2017 when I started getting into collectibles and antiques. I didn't replace... Uh, sorry, I replaced all my ceramic, uh, all my toys and ceramics, uh, all my toys and electronics and stuff with ceramics. Um, but that was a bad move. What I should have done is split down the middle 50-50 kept doing the toys for a good majority but then add the ceramics in rather than just taking over my inventory with ceramics that was the wrong move in that position essentially so and i've touched upon that before actually you know in a few videos i think so uh yeah definitely next year focus on getting a few more toys get a good reinvest uh, get good reinvesting throughout the year for the next q4 and then get back on top of things a little bit more from that and then if it so happens i know there's people listening to this who think that cryptocurrency is a load of you know a bad word basically let's just say a bad word a load of whatever um but I believe in cryptocurrency. I believe in the current holdings that I have. It's got a good community centered around it, the cryptocurrency that I'm invested in. Um, and so if that turns into something, I can use my passive income from that or my, uh, you know, my dividends or whatever you want to call them. I can use that income to filter back into my business to buy more, maybe for Q4 next year or maybe the year after or maybe not for Q4, but maybe just generally buy more stock for my business and get it flipping over quite consistently. So then that, I've I've then got that. Now, yeah, okay, maybe it doesn't work out like that. Maybe my investment doesn't turn out the way I hope, but you know, all we can do is, all I can do really at the moment is be hopeful, um, be satisfied with the investment that I've made, which I am, and, uh, and we'll see on that front. But I can't, I'm not in the mindset anymore of thinking right that's kind of guaranteed that investment's guaranteed or that investment is uh is going to be my kind of safety blanket i've got to think right let's get the reselling back on track let's get sorted with everything for next year and let's have a good strong year next year and then um, if anything else turns out from these investments or whatever it may be that's just an added bonus on top kind of thing um and if things do work out with those invest- investments, I'll be in a very, very strong position. And it will mean that I can realize a dream of being able to work a little bit less on certain sides of my business and do a few more creative projects, maybe even do a few more uh, bits with YouTube that I'd like to do that maybe I just don't have the time to do at the moment because I'm trying to focus on other areas of my business or maybe I can focus a little bit more on philosophy or psychology and being able to um, dedicate a little bit more time to actually understanding and reading up on on subjects like that that I really enjoy Um, so yeah but we'll see that's obviously speculative so that's my little ramble my 14 minute ramble or 10 minute ramble or whatever it's been on um, where I kind of want to take my business, what I want from reselling over the next 12 months, 18 months, something like that. Um, And of course, I could discuss YouTube as well, but I kind of know at the moment my plan for YouTube is just pump out as much content as I can. Um, I'm focusing with the reselling toolkit, reseller toolkit on search traffic. So what I'm meaning by that or search ranking is... I'm doing titles with the Reseller Toolkit that will hopefully over the next 12 months start ranking in search. 
and then it doesn't really matter so much how many views I'm getting in the first 24 or 48 hours with those videos because if I do the tags correctly, if I do the titles correctly and I focus on good search terms with low competition, I can slowly rank and get some views for them over time anyway. So I'm trying to pump out as many of the reseller reviews I can do and I'm trying to do them to a good quality as well so then when those people find them on the search traffic who may not be resellers, um, they can at least view the video um, and see that it's a it's a clear and concise review let's say of that product um, so yeah trying to work on that as well I want to try and do some more vlogs and I want to try and do some more quality vlogs and spend a bit more time editing them but again that's just more time obviously I'm still going to be doing the podcast I'm still going to be doing Thursday talks I've got sales updates to do haul videos to do if I go to the car boots you know I'm going to probably do a vlog there or maybe if I don't do a vlog I'll at least do a haul video from them so there's so much I'm doing with my reselling at the moment I would love to do some more I would actually really love to do another song or a couple of other songs but again the amount of time that the songs take to do the video and then, and and you know write it and then actually do the the audio for it and stuff it's literally two or three days worth of solid work i'm talking 12 18 hours or something maybe even a little bit more than that um and therefore you know that's a big chunk out of, out of my days basically so that would be something i'd like to do but again i can't do that so i've got Fair, fair focus with re uh, with reselling YouTube. I've got a fair focus with my reselling, um, you know, my normal reselling business. It's just with the YouTube, it's very, very sporadic, really. I'm just literally, my, my plan is just to get as much content out there as possible, basically. That's my, my plan at the moment. It's kind of always been my plan, just get as many videos out there as, as I can, because it's always about the backlog, basically, for me. If I have a good, strong backlog of videos all getting a few views a day for me, then, uh, you know, it can turn into something decent. And of course, if I have a good amount of videos out there, I can also help a lot more people because I've got more informative information out there and I've done uh, plenty of videos. But yeah, I mean, I'd love to just do one video a day or something if I could, but I just can't dedicate the time to, to doing that, unfortunately. So next, getting on to the more general stuff in this podcast um, about obviously knowing what you want from Reselling, not knowing what I want, we've just been very selfish there for 13 minutes, but not knowing what I want, but what you want, so part-time or full-time, so how can you tell which suits you, and the fact is you may not know which suits you, either part-time or full-time, until you've actually just given it a go, until you've just tried both ways of doing it. So until, let's say you're a part-timer, maybe you won't really fully understand whether full-time is for you or not until you just give it a go. Or if, let's say, you're full-time but you never were part-time, you just literally quit your job as soon as you found reselling and, and just went for it, you may not know whether part-time is for you. So you might need to think, hang on a minute, may maybe something in your full-time reselling, maybe you have quit your job and you've maybe done it a little bit prematurely um, and something's not quite right in your full-time reselling. Maybe you're not making enough money, maybe you've, you're finding that your motivation isn't there for it or whatever it may be. Maybe you're not being disciplined with yourself or something like that. Then maybe that can f make you think, oh, actually, I've got to go. I've got to try part-time reselling, and I've got to see because maybe if I try part-time reselling, that might be more my level. So sometimes you don't really know until you've had a little bit of a go of both, um, or maybe you kind of see something's going wrong in one of them. Maybe uh, if you are full-time, you're not quite up to speed. You're not being as disciplined as you need to be. You're not. Um, finding enough items or you're not you know you're not working enough basically or you're not being as efficient as you could be with your working and therefore something's a little bit off you then need to obviously step it down you may need to step it down so you might not I say you might not know what which is right for you until you've really had a little bit of a go at both of them but the problem is you know, if you're a part-time reseller, you can't just have a go at full-time reselling if you've got a full-time job. You know, because if if you've got a full-time job, you can't just quit that job and say, look, I'm giving this reselling a go full-time for three months. If I don't make it, can I just come back to the job? You know, you can't necessarily do it. There might be some 
circumstances. I'm sure there are some circumstances out there where that might be um, a, a situation that might manifest itself, that might be allowed for some reason. Um, but generally, you can't do that. So that's the problem here. If you're part time, you might think to yourself, yeah, I'm going to be great at full time. I'm going to be really dedicated, really motivated, all the rest of it. But when you go full time or, you know, you might um, you might think to yourself, well, yeah, if I did full time, I would be like that. But then once you get a taste of it, let's say you're not like that. And then because you've got a taste of it and because you've had to sacrifice something to get to be full time resign, that sacrifice might be in vain and you might end up losing most things around you, you know, maybe it might be a job, maybe it might be, you never know, you might have had arguments with a partner over reselling or whatever, and it's got so bad, and you've ended up going full-time reselling, and they've ended up leaving you or something, I know that's probably a little bit far-fetched, but I'm sure in some circumstances, people get crazy annoyed over, over reselling, and um, it ends up kind of harming relationships and stuff, because what we've got to also think is that, reselling on a full-time level is um, very intr intrusive of your life, especially if you haven't got a lock-up or you haven't got, you know, an, an office somewhere else outside the house. You can soon clutter up a, a, a house pretty easily, and that can cause a lot of friction in a relationship. So you end up kind of somewhat sacrificing something if you're, let's say, a part-time going to full-time, and you've got to make sure, essentially, that you are going to be dedicated full time, that you are going to do it well, because that sacrifice might not be worth it if you aren't. And it's all well and good you saying, as I say, oh, well, I'll be good at, I'll be good at full time resign. It's going to be for me. But how do you know? You've not experienced it. And until you experience it, you won't know. But you can only experience it generally most of the time by taking a sacrifice, whether it be uh, a little bit of hostility in a relationship because you're going full time, you got more stuff in the house. Whether it be you're sacrificing a job, as I say, or you're sacrificing something, um, and and so you've got to be damn sure that it that it is right for you. So, but how do you do that? You can't do that. So you're in a little bit of a, a double bind or a little bit of a position there that is uh, that you can't you can't really get out of until you somewhat just take a leap of faith in, in one regard and just just do something that is completely outside of your control or or is somewhat outside of your control really because you have the control in the sense of you can put the work in you can put the motivation in uh, when you become full-time resign but if it's not for you it's just not going to be for you. That's kind of somewhat outside of your control. It might be personality factors. So for example, um, the fact is that your personality doesn't align with resign perfectly. And, you know, OK, some uh, some would argue that's somewhat in your control, but your personality is also a little bit outside of your control. You can't necessarily force your personality to adapt around a business. It just is your personality and therefore it might be it might not align correctly and you might need to do something else. So, yeah, just when you go in full time or let's say you um, you're trying to find out which suits you, give it considerable thought before you start doing one or the other. Just think to yourself, right, I'm going to start off slow. I'm going to see what this is like. I'm going to really go into it. I'm going to talk to other people, let's say, about uh, who are full-time resellers or who are part-time resellers or whatever, I'm going to talk to them and I'm get, going to get as much information from those people as possible and then I'm going to collate my own information, my own uh, life information, the situation that I'm in within my life and I'm going to put it all together and then I'm going to make a calculated risk of, right, let's go for it. And to be honest, it's still a risk. It's still something that you may think to yourself, hmm... I don't know about this. I'm still not 100% sure. But sometime you've got to take that risk as well. You've sometimes got to take that leap at some point. But if you're going to take that leap, at least try and make it a little bit calculated. At least think it through a little bit before you end up going that full time because it might not be for you. So as I mentioned, sometimes you don't know unless you've tried both. But... A good indicator, so, so I've wrote down a few good indicators here. 
So, a good indicator of whether full-time would be good for you um, is not only how much money you are currently making with Resign. So, for example, let's say you're part-time now and by some miracle you're making around a grand a month net profit around your full-time job. There are those people who do that part-time, there are those people who are part-time and do more than that, so it's very doable. But that's quite a good figure, that's a, you know, that's a nice figure for part-time. So then you think, right, well, I'm earning that much, but also not just that. You know, that's a good base. I, you know, I know I can earn some good money part time. So the chances are I'm dedicated and motivated. I, I have a good amount of self-discipline. So if I make the transition to full time, it maybe shouldn't be too bad for me. But not also that. Think about things like the hours you put in and not only the hours you put in but how effectively you are using those hours because you might put in quite a lot of hours now if you're part-time you're probably not going to be able to put in quite a lot of hours but maybe you put in x amount of hours and you're not maybe using them as efficiently as you could so then maybe that's an indicator there that you either need to change something up a little bit with that with regard to that efficiency or how you're using your time or simply the fact that if you were to go full time and you were to have more hours in the day all you would simply do is use the more hours in a, a, a lack, with a lack of efficiency anyway like you're currently doing so then you have to think, right, I've got to change up now so that then if I do go full time, I'm going to have that efficiency or um, essentially I just don't go full time. I just stay at part time and I think actually because of my lack of efficiency with time management, it might not be for me. Now, there are many full time resellers out there. I would even say myself included in this who aren't very good with time management. Now, what's the alternative with with time management uh, what's the alternative if you're not if you're naturally not good at time management um and there's no way you can be because trust me i i am my personality i've done tests on myself i've done i've looked into myself uh, as many people know i know myself at this point like the back of my hand i'm very very on it with myself essentially of my uh, introspection and my personality of everything and i'm sure in the future i'll be even more uh, self aware but i've tried all the different things in the book i've tried time uh, tables i've tried uh, what do we call it i've tried that google calendar the google scheduling thing i've tried all the things these big motivational guys say i've tried all the things that uh, certain psychologists say uh, that are good things to go by i've you know i've tried so many things over the last few years over the last three four years um and i always end up reverting back to my original state because my personality i am i am slightly low in the trait conscientiousness as many of you will be aware and also that can kind of lead into time management as well you know if you're not conscientious with the things you're doing you might not be conscientious with your time management so I've tried all these things they just don't work because naturally my base nature is not one of being conscientious that's why it would be brilliant for me to get into a relationship with someone who's very naturally high in the trait of conscientiousness because then we balance each other a little bit well uh, better now I'm not necessarily incredibly low in conscientiousness so we wouldn't necessarily get a, a real clash in, in personalities there or personality traits but I'm just a little bit below average so you know, I can be conscientious in certain areas of my life, but not in all areas of my life. So therefore, having a spouse with a higher level of conscientiousness would would then balance us a little bit, you know, as a, as a whole. So because of that, I know I'm not very good at time management. And there's no point me trying to do it, trying to do it, trying to do it, because that's just the base nature of who I am. I'm not going to, you can't, it's naive to think you can change a person. And I would even argue, I know others would argue against me on this, but it's also even naive to try and think that you can really change yourself in, in any way. Okay, yeah, maybe physically you can change yourself. You can go to the gym, you can work out and stuff like that. But your personality, the person you are, the traits that you possess, you will always possess those traits. You may be able to develop them in subtle ways over time of using discipline and really, really, really focusing but it will take a lot of time and also 
it those traits are going to be with you anyway those traits you, i'm always going to be a person who's very high in openness and that means i'm always going to have the ability to connect to abstract ideas i'm always going to be very open to new ideas to to be in uh, new experiences as well that means that i'm also going to be creative eccentric things like that that's never going anywhere and i'm sure everyone will agree with me on that i'm never going to be less eccentric it's just the fact that I am who I am, essentially. So I'm never going to be incredibly high in conscientiousness. I may be able to develop it a subtle little bit and get a little bit better. But again, that's going to take a lot of discipline, a lot of time. And it's going against the very base nature of my personality. Um, so you're actually, in one way, trying to fight yourself then. You're trying to fight your own personality to try and to try and beat it and it just it doesn't work and you can't you can't fight yourself and win that's the whole definition of anxiety and depression you're trying to fight yourself you're trying to fight your own internal feelings of anxiety yourself well that's an internal and an internal battle it doesn't work it's the it's two it's the same battle you're battling yourself you know that's why um people have a lot of anxiety because they don't understand that they're that they're in this internal battle with themselves or maybe they do understand it but they don't they can't break free of that they keep getting into the same can we go round in a circle it's a vicious circle as many people say and they go back into the same kind of activities with the same mentality and they actually harm themselves in doing so because they're simply fighting themselves they're not allowing themselves to to open up to these new experiences and experience them experience them for all their worth the positive and the negative and if they do so happen to have anxiety in those um, situations they don't allow themselves to accept it Instead, they have to battle the anxiety, they have to fight it, they have to try and win over it. Well, that's not the way to fight anxiety. The way to fight anxiety is to go into the situation and let the anxiety come in. Literally, And it's the hardest thing to do, it's the hardest thing to do, but it's let the anxiety come in. And that, that takes a hell of a lot of self-sacrifice, it takes a hell of a lot of kind of standing down but when you stand down from that battle that you're only fighting yourself against uh, against yourself anyway what it does is that means that the other person turns away because the other person all along the anxiety was part of yourself anyway so when you back down the anxiety slowly backs down because you've shown it a sense of acceptance now that doesn't mean to say the anxiety isn't pleasant but it means that it's, it's reduced a little bit because over time, of course, and with discipline and being able to cultivate this skill, because it is a skill as well, um, and then therefore it slowly reduces over time and you, you, you then start to realise that you can do more and more things because you're going out there more, you're doing more things and every time you're doing that, you're, you're getting in this uh, realm of somewhat self-sacrifice or, or self-acceptance, let's say. Um, with regards to your anxiety and then you expand and you expand and you expand and you expand so yeah I forgot what I was kind of uh, talking about there but you know as I say if you're naturally like that um, then it's not really going to help much to be able to fight it loads you've just got to accept it so this is what I was talking about so let's say these people who are um you know, who aren't good at time management, how do they run a full-time business? Because as I say, there's plenty of resellers out there who are full-time, who naturally run a good business. The only way to do it is simply to put more hours in. If you're naturally not good at time management, you're naturally not very conscientious, yet you have to basically get one hand up by sheer, sheer amount of quantity of time that you're putting in. So if there's someone out there who is not very good at time management and, and just doesn't seem to be able to cultivate any uh, increase in it at all, you know, certain people might be able to cultivate a little bit more of an increase in it over time, as I say. But let's say they, they don't, then what they need to do is just simply put in 12 hours a day or 10 hours a day. And that's what I do. I, I, I get by on just putting tons of hours in. Now, of course, the best combination, which many, many people, many, many of these big motivational guys have, have talked about, uh, Gary Vee is the person who comes to mind with this, is uh, fight it on both fronts. So 
work smart and work long. If you work smart and you work long, then that's the best best situation. But for me, that's never been... Um, well, you know, in certain areas, in certain areas like YouTube and stuff, I'm a certain, I, you know, I work smart and then I work long, let's say. In other areas of my business, I don't work smart. Uh, I just work long. Uh, and again, that's my lack of conscientiousness coming in. So in some areas, I can cultivate the conscientiousness. In other areas, I can't. And therefore, I just have to make up for it by working long. Um, and that works for me. I'm okay with that. I'm accepting of the fact that that's part of who I am. And, uh, you know, I'll try and cultivate a little bit of conscientiousness here and there um, with certain things I do and certain daily activities that I do. But when I'm not conscientious, I'm not going to berate myself for it. I'm not going to say, oh, well, oh, I'm terrible, aren't I? Oh, that was horrible. I'm just going to say, well, look, that's part of my, that's part of who I am. That's part of me being a flawed human. And that's fine. We all have these little things that we're not brilliant at. I'm not going to turn around and say, oh, well, I've got to make myself into this perfect person. That's completely ridiculous. Just accept it, you know, and if you want to cultivate it, try and cultivate it a little bit more, then do so. But don't think to yourself that you're gonna get it perfect. Don't think don't don't kid yourself with the illusion of perfection. Don't do that, I would I would say. But anyway, so yeah, and also one of the other things of a good indicator of whether you might be good as full time opposed to part time we sign is your general amount of motivation and happiness in the job. So if you're part-time, and I spoke, touched upon this the other week about how, essentially, why would you continue reselling if you're not loving it? Why would you continue anything if, you, if you've not been loving it for a long time? Uh, unless, obviously, for some reason, you're in a, in a dire position in which you have to continue that thing that you're doing. Um, but if you are very, very motivated and you have a lot of happiness in your resign at a part-time level, let's say, then it may be, again, an indicator that full-time is more for you. Full-time is maybe more of the thing that that uh, you can go for and that will actually uh, work out for you because you're very, very happy, you're very, very motivated. This is what happened for me. I fell so much in love with resign from the get-go. It was kind of like love at first sight. I mean, I don't know whether I quite believe in that. I'm, I'm still... From a philosophical standpoint, I'm still really looking into the whole love at first sight thing. Um, I think I've made some headway on love in my own personal opinion and what I believe it is um, in terms of a human emotion, but also in terms of an egoic construct in one one regard as well, so a product of the ego. Um, but also, love at first sight is, 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 is interesting, but... I don't know whether I believe in it or not. I'd say I'm doing a bit more research into it and I'm looking into it more. But it was almost like love at first sight anyway of resign for me. And and I nearly got into a philosophical rant then, but I didn't. I didn't. I want, I want that on the record that I didn't go off on one. Um, so, yeah, it was almost like love at first sight. And I just had so much motivation and passion for resign that um, I essentially just hit it hard I just went hard for it I just I, oh no taking out of context that sounded so wrong I went hard for it oh god or hit it hard oh no 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 anyway so I did I really went for it is what I'm saying and um and I knew I knew that full time I wanted to be for a burning desire I knew that I'd make it work anyway I knew it I just had belief in myself I knew that I'd put the discipline in. I've always been a very, very self-disciplined person. I may not have conscientiousness, but I can work long hours and I can be disciplined in that regard and get things done. Um, so, yeah, I, I, you know, I had that happiness for it. So if you've got that motivation and happiness in your part-time resign, that, again, might be one of the indicators. And I do want to stress one of, not the indicator, but one of the indicators that full-time might be for you. And also look, looking critically um, on how you are working without a boss. So again, I touched upon self-discipline a second ago and me being quite self-disciplined. If you need someone there to shout at you or to say, or not to shout at you, but even just to, to be a bit assertive or discipline you in some way until you get the work done, 
full time probably isn't for you. Look, you need to have that yourself. You need to have structure yourself and you need to think to yourself, look, right, this is what I've got to do today. Let's go and do it. That that's essentially it. You know, we don't need to glamorize it with loads of different uh you know different things different notes and um all, all these different structures that people have the base thing is in reselling is write down the things you want or think about the things you want to do in the day and are you going to do them or not if you know if you're not if you're not brilliant without a boss then you're not going to do them you've not got much self discipline and if you do them then you've got a bit more self discipline and you can work without a boss and you know you just need to think about which one are you and if you are um the latter one of those and you have more self discipline then full time resign might be for you now of course you can dress it up as i say and you can glamorize it and you can say well i'm going to write down these notes every day or i'm going to do this calendar or i'm going to do that or the other which is all fine if that works for you brilliant but you've got to have the self discipline in the first place to be able to do the calendars or to be able to write down the notes to then give you uh the basis for being able to do more of the work yourself anyway so if you've not got the self discipline from the from the get go from the offset then you're not even going to be able to do the calendars or going to be able to do any of the things uh to structure what you're meant to be doing in your business so you've got to identify whether you have that self discipline uh from the offset whether it's naturally present inside of you and whether it naturally wants to arise when you're doing your work uh, and if you don't have that then maybe stick to part time that's all i'm saying because um yeah it probably wouldn't go very well for you full time if you're going to be lazy about watching youtube videos all day now i don't want to give the impression that i don't watch youtube videos i do watch youtube videos but when i watch youtube videos i generally get on with some other work so i'm watching youtube videos in the background while i'm on photoshop doing thumbnails or doing graphics or whatever it may be for youtube or i'm watching uh reselling videos while i'm doing a little bit of listing on my phone so i'll have them playing on my computer while i'm doing a bit of listing in the afternoon maybe or you know these kind of things i generally stay away from watching reselling videos while i'm doing my labeling or my packing and stuff like that uh definitely my labeling because i don't want to label the parcels wrong and stuff so um but you know you can you can still watch uh youtube videos you know i watch you i even watch youtube videos without doing bits of work throughout some you know sometimes throughout the day uh not necessarily every day but certain days um so it's not like i don't watch youtube reselling youtube videos or anything but you've got to have that self blitz discipline to say right that's enough or right let's get on with a little bit of work while i'm listening to this in the background because i've i've been watching this for 10 20 minutes now and i and i feel like i've had enough of a break it's fine to have that break in the day if you want if you want to kind of have a cup of tea and stuff and you've been working well but right I'm cutting this off now and I'm going to go back to work and and it's a bit easier for me now because I've been doing it for so long. I treat these as breaks. I actually have almost structured breaks in the day like an employee would do. You know, at three o'clock, I'll have a 10, 20 minute break. Sometimes I'll have a little bit of a snack. I'll watch a bit, of, you know, a reselling video or whatever it may be. So I actually do almost treat myself like an empl employee and my boss is, is almost there in the back of my mind saying, right, okay. We're about done now, we best go. And I don't necessarily say, right, I've got 10 minutes, or I've got 20 minutes exactly. But, you know, I'll think, right, I've got around this time. Maybe it's 3 o'clock, and I'll say, right, I'll, I'll have till around this time. I won't really put an a, a incredible fixation on it, but say I'll have till around this time, and then and then move on. Uh, and normally, all the time, what I do in, in specifying that is I end up having less time than I've specified, because I'm always kind with myself, um, in the first place of specifying that time and because I've been kind with myself first off I then allow myself to start a little bit earlier than that time I've set because I think to myself well I'm not being pushed around by anyone I'm just doing it myself so if I'm doing it myself I may as well start early because I, I see no reason why I shouldn't so it's that kind of I, I do work quite well in a laissez-faire attitude a laissez-faire environment i know not everyone can do that not everyone is like that people like a democratic or autocratic style of governing but for me 
I love that laissez-faire attitude. And that is why I'm an eccentric. That is why I'm very liberal, uh, you know, all this kind of stuff, because, uh, you know, I, I like that laissez-faire attitude. Or it might be the fact that because I'm eccentric or liberal, I like laissez-faire. I think that's probably the better way around to say it. Um, but, you know, that that's how I am. So that's how I like working. Um, and therefore, that's probably why I'm quite suited to uh, full-time full-time entrepreneurship or full-time uh, running a business opposed to an autocratic workplace possibly we could say like an office i don't think our offices are particularly autocratic completely maybe a little bit of democratic in there really um obviously the army is more autocratic and things like that it's pretty extreme autocratic actually but um you know so uh, but i don't think i would work well in that environment because I, I wouldn't like it and I, I I would I'd just simply quit because I wouldn't I wouldn't like that environment and I'm not going to stay there because I'm like well I don't need this I'm just I'm just going to do my own thing you know and even if I don't have a lot of money I don't care I'll just do my own thing you know I'll scrape by somehow I'll go down to London and go in one of them little uh communities you know where they have they hardly have any money and they just like eat off the land and stuff I'll do that I'll be a hippie I don't care you know I just I genuinely don't care I'm just going to do what I'm going to do and I know I'm always going to get through life uh, my my philosophy in life is just just scrape through just scrape through don't don't try too hard just scrape through that's always been my philosophy which is completely contradictory to how I am um in uh, on YouTube on in my business I'm not someone who scrapes through in fact I'm someone who does a damn good bit of hard work but um I always have that thought in the back of my mind I'm just going to scrape through it might be a um a kind of uh, a, like a little bit of a validation for me a safety validation um in the fact that oh don't worry I'm just scraping through whereas actually there's there's a higher level there that I actually want to succeed that I want to strive for things but I don't focus on that too much as you say I'm just scraping through because maybe somewhat I'm afraid of of a little bit of that success of a little bit of of presenting myself up there on that on that higher pedestal maybe one day I, I will present myself up there on that higher pedestal and be completely comfortable with that but at the moment maybe I'm just having that kind of ideal in my mind of oh, I'm just scraping through and actually I'm doing more work than that but I'm just scraping through because I like that attitude because if you're always in the attitude of oh I'm a, I'm a failure then you're it, it's kind of like there's nothing blocking you if you're always a failure no matter what you do if you always say oh well you know that I'm, I'm that or or maybe not a failure but I'm just I'm just going by kind of thing I'm just getting through then it kind of gives you this this basis that, you, that there's nothing you can do that's wrong because you've already you, you're already there you're already on that baseline so, but if you always say to yourself, oh, well, I'm a big success, I'm brilliant, I'm this, I'm that, then you've got somewhere to fall from, you see. So that's why I'm saying it's a, it's a safety validation for me. If I always think, oh, well, I'm just scraping through, let's say, um, then I've got nowhere to fall from, you know. Whereas if I actually start saying to myself, well, you know, I'm going for this success or I am a big success, then I've got a place to fall from and I'm not that stupid. Even if I was... Uh, you know, a billionaire, a millionaire, whatever, I'd never say I was incredibly successful. I might, you know, say to myself, oh, well, I've done well for myself, you know, in my life, but I'd never preach it all the time. Oh, well, I'm an incredibly big success because then that gives me a place to fall from. You see, so I'm I'm not I'm not I'm I'm pretty intelligent. I'm not bloody doing that. I'm not giving I'm not giving myself a place to fall from, you know? Um, anyway, so what are we on now? So understanding your position. Like, I think this is going to be a long one, guys. It's been a blooming rambly one so far. I'm only halfway through. Um, understanding your position in life or in a household and using this to determine where you want to be with reselling. So I wanted to speak a little bit here about retirement and stay-at-home mums. Now, I have no experience with either of them. Of course, I have grandparents, so and I spent a lot of time with my grandparents when I was younger. It's possibly the reason why certain people like to say about me, which I'm very grateful for, um, that I have an older head on my shoulders. I, I seem to 
put it back to them, you know, the fact that they, I was around them a lot, and I mean a lot when I was younger. I spent hours and hours a week around my, around my grandparents' house, so probably by osmosis, I've kind of, they've transferred a little bit their experience to me. I don't know, maybe that's the case, if you are so one of these people to think that I have got uh, an older head on my shoulders, but yeah, so I was around there a lot, uh, so maybe I do know a little bit about the retirement thing, but not massively, of course, I've not experienced it myself, I can only be an onlooker of what my grandparents' lives are, are like, and what they were like when I was younger as well, when we were retired still. Um, so I want to talk about retirement stay-at-home mums, obviously I have no experience whatsoever around stay-at-home mums, so people in the comments can, you know, if I get something wrong or anything, or if I say something that's not particularly right, then you know, put a comment down below, but I'm going to be very, very general with this, so then I don't get into too much specifics, um, but essentially, let's say you're, um, you've got a certain position in your life, or you're at a certain stage in your life, whether it's retirement, whether it's that you've just had a baby, or whether, you know, you're, you're simply a stay-at-home mom, even though your kids are a little bit more grown up, let's say, um, you're in that kind of stage in your life, Knowing that you're in that stage in, in life will then be you'll be able to kind of put a value on your resign. So, for example, if you're in retirement, you'll know that you don't necessarily want to take it full time. You'll know that you maybe don't want to be a complete full time resign. Now, of course, it's a bit different in retirement because as soon as you start resign, you're kind of automatically a full time resign because. Even though you maybe not be, you're not doing it to the standard of full time resellers do it. You're not doing anything else as a job, so it's kind of almost, it almost qualifies a little bit for the title of full time resign, even though you might not be making a lot of money. But let's say you're in retirement, you probably don't want to do it to the extent of these full time resellers. You probably don't want to do it, you know, you don't want to do three grand a month net profit or whatever it is that certain people are doing. Let's say. Um, but you do want it as a hobby, you do want it as something part-time, you want something to occupy your time, you know, maybe alongside that, I'm being very, very stereotypical now, but to be honest, if I was an old person, this is what I would do with my spare time in retirement, but maybe you like gardening, maybe you like going on the odd walk, maybe you, have, you, know, maybe you have an art, a walking group or something, or maybe, um, I don't know, you, uh, like watching odd TV shows or like doing a bit of reading or something like that. Maybe you do something, I don't know, but maybe you have other different hobbies. You know, so you, you do other things, but you want, you want obviously, you're reselling, you want to do that part-time as well, something to occupy your time, something to fill out your week as well. So you know you're not going to want to do it full-time, so then you know from that what you want from reselling straight away. So looking at your stage of life, looking at your position as a retired person you may think right you know what I'm happy with doing it to this level and that level might be I'm going to do 20 new listings a week so a few a handful a day or whenever you do them you fit them in um, and I want to earn £200 a month net profit or £100 a month net profit or whatever it doesn't really matter I'm just making up numbers but that's what you want and it's not about the money for you you know you may have a pension you may have a private pension a state pension or whatever it may be uh, you know it's not about that for you uh, it's simply just about doing something with your time and you enjoy reselling and that and that's brilliant so looking at that stage of life can fix in your uh, in your mind an idea of what you want from reselling also if you're a stay at home mum you may, uh, obviously you'll need the flexibility, so reselling is perfect for you in that regard, you want that flexibility, again you might not be in a position where you need to earn a lot of money, you might need to earn a little bit to contribute to the bills, uh, but you might not need to earn tons of money, then again you might be in a position where you do need to earn a little bit of money, but you simply can't because you need to stay at home essentially, um, so then reselling gives you the flexibility, and then you can potentially grow it into an income. So again, looking at that position, maybe let's say your spouse, your husband is a, um, you know, he has a pretty good job and everything, um, and then you stay at home with the kids, uh, obviously you need the flexibility, then you might think to yourself, right, like, I know that I just need to do this part time, I know that I need to contribute X number of pounds to the bills uh, a month, maybe it's £200, maybe it's £300, maybe it's £500, whatever it is, it, again, I'm just making figures up, um, but that's what I need to do, so then you think, right, I'm going to give this a good go, 
I've got X number of time to be able to do it because we've got savings stored away or, or we've got money to pay the bills for X number of months. So I've got a time limit in which I can get this reselling up to where it needs to be for me. And uh, yeah, I'm going to do it and I'm going to work around the kids. I do know quite a lot of people on Instagram and stuff and on, you know, just generally in the reselling community who are stay-at-home mums and who make a little bit extra money to contribute to the bills um you know of their household on a monthly basis and it works very very well and the flexibility of it is good um, obviously you might run into troubles of your kids getting bored you know maybe you have to go to car boots or charity shops you might get a little bit bored or something um i don't know you know there, there might be other challenges in that regard you might not get as much listing done because the kids are moaning at you and screaming at you and all the rest of it um or they might somewhat i don't i don't know because i don't have kids but i guess that like kids some little kids will maybe they're toddlers or something or maybe they're four or five or something the little kid will be pulling on your skirt while you're trying to do f photography not your skirt that you maybe got on your mannequin but your actual skirt that you're wearing and saying mommy 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 i need food i need a drink and i'm uh, and you're like oh for god's sake but so there's always going to be things you know but you're going to obviously be able to have a bit of flexibility so maybe the kids have gone for a little bit of a nap or something i don't know maybe they're young enough to do the whole napping thing and you get a little bit of working then you get a little bit of listings in or photography or something or whatever the most challenging thing is to do around the kids maybe you get that in while they're napping um so so to avoid any kind of circumstances where it's just completely annoying and outside of your control to even try and and get them to settle down essentially um but, you know, you, you do what you can and you've got that flexibility. Maybe late at night you get some listings done when we've gone to bed. Obviously, I don't know what time kids go to bed. I guess maybe if they're young kids, maybe 7 o'clock or something. I don't know. I'm going to look into this. I am going to... Don't worry. I know people are saying, oh, my God, you're probably... You don't know anything about kids. You shouldn't have kids and stuff. Don't worry. Don't worry. I'm 23. I'm going to look into as many... In the nine months that my wife is pregnant, if 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 I get kids, I'm gonna read up on all the bit. I'm gonna read up on loads. I am gonna make sure that I'm I'm gonna read up on. Uh, this is why I'm reading up a load on psychology because I want to really give my kid a good start. You know, good good start. Try and make it so that us two as parents are quite mentally well balanced in terms of our psychology. Again, you could argue with that one for me with my eccentricity. Um, but, you know, make sure that we're fairly psychologically well balanced and stuff. So and we're passing on uh, good, good kind of vibes, let's say. And there's probably a more scientific word than that. But, you know, passing on more good vibes or whatever. And um, and therefore just giving that that child a good start in life and stuff. So, yeah, I've got plenty of time to get good with the whole children stuff. So don't worry. I'm not having kids anytime soon, so humanity is safe for the moment. Um, but yeah, so as I say, just just look into it, look into your position in life, and and then get a grip on where you want to be with reselling from that essentially. So look at it in a bit of detail and think, right, this is where I need to be, this is where I need to go essentially. So uh, that's that one, and then uh, final couple of points here. Not just focusing on the income you need from resign, but also understanding the creative side that you may yearn for. So you may not just want money from resign. I know that's the general consensus. You know, a lot of people who start resign, you know, you're making a profit on items. It's very, very monetary focused. But you, you personally may not focus on that money as much as other people. You may not need a lot of money from resign, let's say. So you've got to also understand that creative side and focus on that if if that's the case if ne let's say that you are just doing this part-time you've got a full-time job uh, or your partner's got a full-time job and you've got maybe a part-time job or something and you just you don't need any more money necessarily or, or you know you're not you don't have a desire for any more money um so therefore what you you want to do is you want to focus on that creative side so make sure that if you are wanting that creativity from Resign, maybe it's that you're making things to sell on Etsy or something like that, I don't know. But if you're wanting that side of it, make sure you're focusing on that side of it because that is the thing that ultimately you want from Resign. So think about 
where where your drives lie, where your motivations lie, and focus on those completely and wholly um, so then you can enjoy this and you can take it where you want to be. And when you focus on things that you enjoy, when you focus on the creative side that you really love, the money will start to just naturally come in anyway. So long as you, and I've talked talk about touch on this before, but you know, so so long as you actually put a bit of work in and stuff, and you you do what needs to be done, then the money's going to slowly come for you anyway. So it's not it's not too bad. But definitely, if you want that creative side from reselling, focus on that side of reselling. Focus on making your products well. Focus, if you're not making products, simply focus on doing your photos well and doing your listings well, getting things organized, all that sort of stuff. Just, you know, focusing on that side of things. Whatever it is that you um, essentially want from it, focus on that. So if you're really, really hell-bent on getting a lot of money from Resign, then focus on, not necessarily just focus on the money, but focus on what niche will allow you to get the most amount of money and for the quickest turnaround. So that may be toys and games, or that may be electronics, or that may be something else that has a good sourcing opportunity near you. So whatever it is, whether it's that creativity, whether it's the money, whether it's something else, another third thing, whatever it may be, focus on that and keep going for it and keep going for it and and see how you can naturally achieve this how you're going to achieve this in uh, the easiest way possible the best way possible um and 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 just go for it essentially so yeah that's that one and then also i wanted to i know i've actually touched on this a lot today so i you know i really shouldn't touch on this point anymore so i will be quite um quick with this one but personality will also come into reselling and understanding where you fit best in reselling. It may all it may so happen that your personality traits align perfectly with the nature of reselling and therefore it may be a want for you to go full time at some point. So again, I've mentioned this so much, so I'm not going to go into too much detail on this, but if you uh, are naturally self-disciplined, if you are naturally fairly conscientious, you know, good with your time management and things like that, then these are natural traits that you possess or that maybe you've somewhat cultivated a little bit in your life. Um, and essentially, uh, that might be an indicator that full-time resign is perfect for you. Uh, if you've not got those traits, then part-time resign may be more for you. So again, I don't think people realize this much. Uh, I didn't realize it for a very, very long time. Uh, I was ignorant to the fact that, you know, personality does, or maybe not ignorant to the fact, but I just didn't think about it that much, really. Um, but personality does come into it, and I think this is why we see. And again, a lot of it can also, a lot of this can also just come down to, to drive and motivation and stuff as well. But I think this is why we see certain people who are, who naturally are very, very proficient at reselling, and then other resellers who aren't as naturally proficient at it. And there's full-time resellers out there who display both. So, for example, there's uh, there's full-time resellers out there who are naturally very, very proficient at it, and then there's also full-time resellers who are maybe a little bit uh, less naturally proficient at it, um, but they both seem to make it work. Now, uh, but what you'll see is that the people who are naturally more proficient at it tend to make more money with it, as you would naturally expect. If they've got more self-discipline, or if they've got more of a certain trait that allows them to excel in this game, then then they're going to excel. Naturally, that's how you would imagine it to be. Um, but then there's other people who, as I say, maybe don't have as many of those correct traits that align with the nature of reselling, and therefore they they maybe don't earn as much. But they still can do this to a full time. It's not to say that you can't do it. I don't want to put anything anyone off, but I'm just saying that they um, maybe don't earn as much. I would even put myself. I put myself in the middle. Actually, I definitely don't have all the traits, all the kind of personality to be very very proficient in reselling, but. I don't have all of them that are really not proficient. So I'm kind of in the middle and therefore I can I can do it to a fair standard. 
but there's other people who have more of those traits that then can really take it. And almost it looks in those people as if the the work isn't anything to them. It's almost as if they they, they just can naturally do it so well. And it, and that's where people get this kind of idea of, oh, reselling's easy because they're watching these people who are naturally very proficient in reselling and who have personalities that and, and the traits that align naturally with uh, what it would be to to be an excellent reseller essentially and because they make it look easy um it then makes other people think oh well yeah i can do this all the rest of it but you've got to understand your personality type your traits might not align perfectly and it might seem a little bit hard for you and also not only that those people who are really really good resellers and whose personality traits do align they still go through the same problems you know they still have the same problems it's just the fact that they may be able to deal with them, get through them and stuff a little bit better because they have these certain tendencies. And it's not only personality traits, it's things like um, being comfortable in themselves as well and being comfortable um, in in actually dealing with problems and stuff like that because there is, a, is a, there is an art of dealing with problems. Uh, there is a real skill and an art to it and it's it's essentially i'm not saying i'm proficient at this at all i would i would disagree but um there is some sort of an art and 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 a way in which you can deal with problems that essentially makes them a little bit easier on yourself and you can you can get through them and 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 kind of i'm doing i'm doing a motion of a snake going from side to side at the moment i don't know why i'm doing that but you can kind of wiggle through them essentially i suppose I'm, i'm kind of saying to myself there um but yeah, so there is that kind of way and then they may be a little bit more proficient at dealing with those problems and getting through those problems and stuff. So, you know, that that makes it again look a little bit easier for them. Um, but again, that but problem dealing with problems, problem solving and stuff is more of a skill that can be cultivated. It's not something like a your base nature of your personality that yeah, it might be able to be cultivated a little bit, but not too much. Problem solving is something that you can actively cultivate. You can, with a, with a good bit of discipline, you can really get a good level of uh, of problem solving. You know, um, of course, there are going to be those people who are naturally more proficient at it than others, um, dependent on their uh, you know personality traits. But there are there are ways of excelling in it without those personality traits there are ways of being able to cultivate it to a fairly decent extent uh, i was never really very good at problem solving or anything like that but or, or not necessarily problem solving but just dealing with problems um but now i'm a little bit better at it because of obviously dealing with problems for the last four years so there are ways in which you can kind of cultivate that a little bit but again Again, we have to go back to the idea of the fact that if you are naturally very, very low in a certain personality trait um, that would go against problem solving, then, you know, it might it might hinder your ability to be able to cultivate that skill to an incredibly high level. But you may be able to cultivate it with enough discipline and stuff to a little bit of a... Of a, of, a, of a better level but yeah so um what was that so i think that's about everything so i've got a few instagram comments today which is cool again if you want to drop a comment down below for next week all about q4 so we're going to be going into everything about q4 so if you've got any uh, information or um anything you'd like to add to the pod- podcast about q4 um then you know any information any of your own experiences with q4 anything that any problems that you've had with q4 experiences that weren't brilliant and that you'd maybe like to pass on to other people then put them down below everything and anything about q4 what would your recommendations be for um stockpiling items for q4 would you do it wouldn't you do it you know all these kind of things we're going to be touching upon so drop them down below in the comments also as i say you can go over to my instagram or the youtube community tab when i've put that post up so yeah as i say i've got four comments today so jane harold says to enhance my funds so essentially i asked a few questions on my instagram um and essentially uh, i just said things like did you start reselling to reach a particular goal is reselling for you a part-time hobby during retirement have you got your sets, uh, sites set on full-time reselling what do you want out of your reselling journey so these are the kind of questions i asked 
And then Jane replied that simply to enhance uh, my funds. So essentially she's kind of started reselling to have the ability to gain more money from it essentially and there's nothing wrong with that. So yeah, essentially that's a perfect thing to say that that's what I want out of reselling. So if you want to enhance your funds, you then have to think to yourself, as I've touched upon, are you a part-time reseller? Are you a full-time reseller? Where do you want to take it in that regard? And then once you've established that and you're comfortable in where you are with reselling, whether you're part-time or full-time, you then think, right, how am I going to enhance my funds in the best way possible? As I've said before, what what am I going to sell? Do I uh, Am I enjoying what I sell also? Because that's got to be a factor. You can't just sell something just to make money because there has to be a bit of enjoyment in there or else you'll just become a brain dead zombie uh, not really enjoying what you sell at all and it becoming a chore but yeah you might think that well i want to sell electronics i want to sell clothing so i'm going to go you know let's say down that road um and uh, and then you're going to be able to enhance your funds that way so it's simply just about setting your sights and uh, and going for it really two aussie thrifters who uh I've, I've i don't know whether i've spoke to actually but uh oh did i spoke speak to I don't know, but I uh, I have watched uh, I've watched one of their videos or no I watched ah that's where I'm thinking of it I watched uh, Rod Pommy Picker's stream with them uh, so they're over in uh, Australia obviously so it's nice to see them getting involved um, and they say knowing what you want is so important to being able to put something in place to get there yeah it is you've got to have that focus know what it is you want to cultivate out of this what it is you want to create out of your business and then you'll be able to think oh right well i'll be able to to do this in this way and i'll be able to get there essentially so yeah i would agree with that uh intel resells or i tell i tell no i tell resells uh my goal uh short term would be to turn full-time reselling into a viable and profitable living to support me and my family so that's a very very big goal but again if it's something you're very very motivated about if you have that self-discipline if you can um you know work for quite a long amount of time as well because at the start it's quite you know you have to do quite a lot of work and if you've but if you've got that motivation you've got that passion then you will be able to do that and you'll be able to cultivate that full-time income and potentially you know, given enough time, be able to support your yourself and your family. So yeah, that's a quite a nice little goal there. And then Jason says, long time support of the channel, Jason reselling. Uh, I wanted to quit my job and work for myself, which I've done with a few bumps along the road. So that's nice to see. So yeah, I mean, as Jason said there, with a few bumps along the road, I want to kind of highlight that because it is you've got to keep keep going with it there's not going to be times that are easy i mean there are going to be times that are easy but it's not going to be all easy times there's going to be hard times there's going to be bumps along the road there's going to be uh things that come to knock you down a peg and then you have to get back up from them there's going to be all sorts of different problems i've had most of the reselling problems i would say now i've had um have i had, i think i've had a gsp issue now have i, I think that was the last issue yeah but yeah because I've had GSP issues, I've had PayPal issues, I've had, vet, oh my god, so many different eBay issues, eBay bans, I've had eBay um, returns, obviously, I've had, uh, as I say, GSP option, uh, GSP issues, I've had, uh, vet, oh my god, a ton of customer issues, somewhat being my fault, somewhat being the customer's fault, obviously, um, yeah, I, I mean, my god, I've had equipment issues galore i've had printer issues i've had you know loads oh my god loads of different issues um yeah I've, I've, i i literally can't list how many issues i've had they're just just so many so there are going to be bumps along the road but if you love it if you really do love it if you really are into reselling if you really um are, are connected with it in such a way you know then you'll get through it you'll keep going and if you have that self-discipline, if you have that motivation, you will eventually get there and it will be fine. So, yeah, that's just what you have to do. You just have to take the good good times and the bad times and, and realize 
when you look back over a few years, oh, it wasn't so bad, you know, I, I've not done too badly, really, and I've grown something that's that's worth noting, essentially, and that's worth being somewhat proud of. So, yeah, anyway, I will leave it there for this one. Uh, again, just very quickly, quarter four is the topic for next week. As I say, drop your comments down below, head over to my Instagram or my uh, YouTube com community tab and check out those posts. They will be going up a few hours after this podcast has gone live. Uh, and yeah, just get involved. Uh, with next week's topic and I really do enjoy reading out the comments and questions and I enjoy it when I get them as well so uh, yeah with that being said I will see you in next week's podcast so see you very soon guys and I will see you in the next one bye for now <laughs>